Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. We now landed into March. <laughs> That's right. The month of St. Patrick's Day and the month of a woman's history. Yeah. Because February was Black History Month and, of course, the month of Valentine's. So there you go. Anyway... Uh, aside from that, I am going to do a movie review this week, but before I get to all of that, because I know it's going to be a long video as usual, <laughs> I, I can hardly ever do a short video these days, but bear with me on this. Well, we were still in February, and it was raining cats and dogs. Yeah, I'm just using the expression, folks, okay? <laughs> but it was raining and pouring like hell. And something unusual had happened. It started to snow. Or perhaps it was hail, for that matter. But I know, I was being optimistic about that. But it's just kind of strange having to see this uh, in my area. Because we often get snow mountains around. Because that's where you go all the way up there. And you get to discover all this snow. And you get to build a snowman and all that. And do anything. Yeah, throw some snowballs. <laughs> oh, wow. But I could have imagined if we had plenty of snow on the streets as well as on the neighborhood that we're living in. So I was expecting to see that too. That would have been really cool. But we got to be careful because it'll, the roads would be slippery. And that's what I'm afraid because you know we want to get into accidents. So my sister had shown me that something unusual was happening uh, I was just staying in my room just minding my own business relaxing um, I was feeling particularly warm because it was so cold outside um, it's not that cold today but but it was extremely cold I had to leave my heater on to, to keep myself warm and I know my, my sister wasn't feeling very well she, she was sick I don't want to catch her cold, so I wanted to make sure, you know, I'd be all right. But she was rushing me into this, telling me that, that it was snowing. And I was like, wow, couldn't believe it. But at the same time, I just felt like it could be hail, too. So it's, so it's sort of a mixture of the two. Because, yes, I mean, it would have been ice all the way that's going down. But everything was great. Well, so far. And before that, um, on this one sunny day uh, during President's Day weekend, because you know, there was no class, uh, we actually went to Little Tokyo. Yes, Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, when I think of Little Tokyo, I'm thinking of the TV series Samurai Pizza Cats. <laughs> like, I was expecting, you know, all the the Samurai Pizza Cats popping up, up in the sky, and they're going to go around on a battle to fight against uh, all the bad guys um, on the streets, <laughs> you know, saving the entire town. <laughs> you get the idea. Um, that was a series that came out in Japan in 1990, but it aired in the U.S. and Canada uh, around the mid-90s, although... It did air it here in 1996, as I recall, but it was on in, in the weekday mornings. Like It was on like early in the morning. Yeah, so I did watch the series, but not as much until later on when I found it online and I started to get some copies of it before we finally got the official release uh, from Discotech Media. I mean, first they released the DVDs to join in with the, the Japanese version. And now they later released their, and maybe it's not their first, but they did finally release the Blu-ray, this SD on Blu-ray as we speak. Yeah, standard on Blu-ray. Yeah, just like how I show you the 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 SD on BD uh, Blu-ray releases of Grimm's Fairy Tale Classics and, and a little bit of Macaulay Knights, which I've yet to do. Someday. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
but it was one of the earlier ones that they've released and it was really cool. Uh, the transfer is exactly how they were, but from their broadcast, so that's what I expected. But I'm glad they're on that. Well, anyway, when we went over there, um, I, I went with my sister, of course, uh, joining in with her best friend. We drove, um, her friend drove around and and we were just exploring all these stores. You know, we eat out. And there was like plenty of those anime stores that they got. And at this point on, I wanted to go to Book Off because that was not only a brand new store, but I've heard of this store coming from my online friends on YouTube. Yeah. Because, you know, they've been exploring all these rare places where they sell physical media of any kind and I was exactly expecting what the one in Little Tokyo had but it was mostly anime stuff like they just have all these um, manga books along with uh, all these merchandising that they got all these toys uh, tons of other art books and other clothes and like fungal pops and everything and they do have physical media there but it was only on like this one small shelf so it was mostly anime stuff that's all they got so i end up getting a book over there the art of my neighbor totoro yes uh, my favorite uh <laughs> my favorite um hayao miyazaki film as well as a studio ghibli film joining in with all the other movies that miyazaki had done along with other um, followers yeah so I got that book it was cool and then later I went to this one store called uh, and I, I do have a coin right here too I'll just show you right now um, there was this one store called uh, gotcha pawn let's see if I can put it up close yeah here we go my tablet yeah so I, I saved that coin and you only have to go there you know get all the tokens so that way you can be able to pick each of these um, these toys that they got inside um, but he, sometimes you have to put like two or three tokens in in order to twist it around left and right and it will receive it uh, through this um, this big ball right here and that's where I got um, this Digimon toy <laughs> right here and I'm sure you'll recognize who this character is if you watch the show <laughs> yeah I only got one but hopefully if I ever go to that store again maybe I'll get plenty because they got a whole bunch of cool stuff over there they of any kind you know they got Pokemon there they got uh, they got Carcaptor Sakura, and they got all these uh, other um, animes that you may be familiar with, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I think they have Yu-Gi-Oh there too and all that stuff. So that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but I also went to all these other um, anime stores that they got, and they even got this jungle store they're called yes they had tons of physical media there too and they got all these other tons of merchandising of any kind that you can get but they're very expensive they're very pricey some of them are reasonable others are just well wow, insane and I know it was really hard because I was hoping to get some physical media there but I didn't have enough money at this point well wow, it wasn't easy but we also went to other stores that even had uh, video games and they even had like tons of video game consoles of any kind like they have Nintendo, Sega, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Switch and many others like wow treasure trove right there <laughs> yeah so it was really awesome that I went there but uh, I wish I had gone there again to buy some more well anyway aside from that um, 
just recently, uh, so with all the rain and, and hail going around, of course, the snow mountains, which I just took pictures of, uploaded on Instagram. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> um, on this particular Tuesday, uh, I was going out with mom and my sister because we had to drop her off at class in Irvine. We, we were going to so many places for a while because, you know, I wanted to get something. It's been a while. So, I mean, I got some money here and there and, and then here and there. Here and there, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, so at least I got some more money later on. But um, I wanted to get uh, the last two uh, Leica films that just came out recently on 4K along with the Blu-ray with the Steelbook uh, that are very exclusive from Shelf Factory. Because uh, previously I just got uh, Coraline and Paranorman to complete with it. So now I got the Box Trolls and Cubo and the Two Strange all on 4K, finally, just to complete that. And as you may know, I have the first four films on Blu-ray when Universal put them out. But I wanted to upgrade them from my old Blu-rays. And I'm always going to keep those no matter what. Uh, especially the ones with the digital codes included. So, yeah. Which I did use. <laughs> yeah, except Coraline and Paranorman's um, digital codes were expired. So I couldn't use them. Uh, although Coraline was already used. So whatever. But not on my library. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but I, I love these movies so much, I wanted to um, be able to have them all in 4K. I hope Mr. Link finally gets a 4K someday too, so they'll do the same thing if Shaw Factory gets the rights to them. But that depends on Fox, which is Disney, and Annapurna Pictures, if they can agree with. But since they got a hold of the Leica films, I think... Maybe there's, there's still a chance. They just need to keep up with that for now. But for now, these are the first four films that they got. Um, well, I wouldn't say the first four because I know they had produced uh, Corpse Bride. And I know that's not part of that. Boy, I don't know if Corpse Bride has ever been on 4K. I don't think so. But even that needs to be out there too. I'd love to see that. So hopefully Missing Link will do the same too. I mean, I think Fox could have released that on 4K and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> All right. And I also got 1408 on Blu-ray. I know it's not on 4K yet, but someday they will because I didn't have that film on Blu-ray. And then I went to um, Book Off, only this time I went to the one in Costa Mesa, exactly what all my online friends have went to yeah all my online friends you know on YouTube and that's a, and the one that I went to is in Costa Mesa California because I had to go to Best Buy over there due to the fact that the one in Tustin um, didn't have any physical media which really pissed me off so I had to go to the one in Costa Mesa and I was so surprised that they still have physical media there because they're now going online and yeah they had this total tech program that I just heard recently where you had to sign up a membership for like 200 a year bullshit I know in order to get physical media you have to probably as a membership you probably have to purchase some certain electronics that you can get for this program so that's why they're getting overpriced now Stupid, I know. Because I've been the Best Buy for decades. I mean, ever since um, the 90s. Yeah, the late 90s when I finally got a Best Buy in my area. Because we never had a Best Buy from where we were until later. I mean, we mostly had Circuit City, along with the good guys, Tower Records, Radio Shack, Prize Electronics, uh, you name it. Those stores that are now gone... But those are the places where I got, you know, TVs, BCRs, and then later DVD players, 
and Blu-ray players, which I know I got one at Kmart. <laughs> That's also gone too. And um, and sometimes I go to Sears to get them as well. I, well, we still have Sears, but only in a few areas, but not much here. So, but that's almost gone anyway. And um, of course, I I got my 4K player at Best Buy, and I know the Blu-ray player I got at Target uh, from 2015 as an upgrade, <laughs> the smaller one. Ah, uh, you get it. You get the idea. But I, I, I also have gotten a lot of electronics over there. You know, I've gotten some physical media there of any kind. Yeah, that also includes music too. Not just movies and TV shows. Everything. It's my go-to place to get something awesome. And now it's just getting worse. But anyway, <laughs> uh, back to book off. I went to the one in Costa Mesa, and it was a treasure trove. There were like tons of physical medias all on the shelves, uh, both brand new, um, but the rest could be used, but they could be like new at times, depending on the condition that they have. And they got like tons of titles that are DVDs, Blu-rays, and even 4Ks. They got boutique labels like Kino Lober along with Arrow, Vinegar Syndrome, uh, Criterions, like they, as well as Shelf Factory, they got all that in there. Uh, and they also got some various uh, TV shows, uh, most of which are out of print, so you can get it there. If you have trouble finding them online, yes, they do have anime there too. They have all the manga books. But they also have other types of books of any kind that you want to get. And yes, they have music. Like they have CDs. They should have vinyls there too. All of that. Um, at least that's what I saw. But I, I, I didn't spend as much time. And I hope I, if I ever do go back there again, I'll probably will spend more. But I was lucky to get some more uh, Blu-rays. And I also got... Uh, a DVD to join in too, <laughs> but what a surprise! I got Rugrats the complete series <laughs> for twenty-two dollars. Because nowadays you would get that for fifty bucks at Walmart's, and sometimes on Amazon you could probably get it for forty even, or unless you could find a different price of each. But twenty-two dollars is a must-own and a must-steal too because. For, for such a set that, for this one big packaging that Paramount's been using, and I know they have done that with a few other studios, I'm not a big fan of their packaging either because, you know, I have trouble taking a disc out and putting it back inside because they're all in 26 disc, multiple. Still, that alone is awesome, and I'm glad I got that. I really am. Because I only owned the first four seasons on DVD individually, and I had some multiple, probably just maybe a, a little more, but but almost getting through all the other ones uh, of all the Rugrats episodes that are all compilation DVDs. So, and of course the movies, but I, I'm getting there, man. I, I like to get some more Nickelodeon stuff too, and I know the dog is barking, so don't remind me of that one. Okay. So it was really awesome. And uh, the four Blu-rays I picked up over there too. Um, and I'm going to show you one. Uh, but I also got uh, the Soloist. Uh, along with X-Men Days of the Future Past. And uh, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Yeah, it's not the greatest sequel. But what the hell. I wanted to take it to complete uh, the 2005 version. It would have been nice to get the 1994 version that was unreleased, so, but it might as well take a bootleg copy of that, for that matter, because there's no official release elsewhere. But anything but the 2015 film, fan forced it, because that's a piece of crap. Oh, and speaking of which, because this is from the same director, well... <laughs> 
<laughs> Another film I just picked up um, that's from that director is indeed Chronicle. And yes, this is one of the Blu-rays I picked up at Book Off, and you can see the price right there. $2.99. Excellent deal. And this was a, uh, a reissue Blu-ray because when this was released in 2012, which that was the year the movie came out, uh, it did came with a DVD and it had a digital copy. Uh, but this was reissued with a digital code. But unfortunately, because this was used and it maybe someone actually had used the code when they bought this and they before they sold this, um, eventually it didn't work. So I can't use the code. Uh, but surprisingly, X-Men Days of the Future Past did work. So that's cool. But I, of course, I, I didn't get it for the code. I got it because I wanted the movie on a disc. So that's for sure. So You know, because I love physical media. And I'm more of a physical media than digital. But I mean... Even though I, I like to watch something on a tablet and on TV and all that, so it's okay. Even on a computer, so I can live with that. And of course, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Um, uh, the, or, it doesn't work anymore, so keep that in mind. I didn't use the code, but whatever, I'll just show you this. <laughs> and of course, here's the disc. This cover art of Seattle, Washington with a space needle and all all in a total destruction exactly like the cover art is right here where you can see all three of them flying around in the sky I mean you think this is a disaster movie but it's not <laughs> so I'm not against it but I still wish they would stop uh, you know gushing it over it because it just makes it worse anyway <laughs> but I'm sort of gushing on physical media a lot so, so I should talk okay anyway this is a found footage movie that's a, a sci-fi adventure it can also be like a superhero type in a way it's a story about three teenage boys who discover something mysterious uh, underground in this small hole and then all of a sudden this particular object that's very crystal like sort of like an alien the ship in some ways they end up receiving all these telekinesis powers so they get to do whatever they want with their mind powers so they can control anything so that's really awesome now, I know it's going to be a little tough to review this movie because, well, for one thing, it is from the director and co-writer, Josh Trank, who, of course, went on to do that horrible Fan Four stick, which I know it did feature Michael B. Jordan. And it's funny how I'm saying this because Michael B. Jordan is going to be in the new uh, Creed sequel. Yes, reprising his role as Adonis Creed as he continues. That's coming out this week. <laughs> yeah, what are the odds here? Because I know he was in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever in a small cameo as Killmonger. Oh, I know. I hated that character, but you get the idea. <laughs> so he's like a hot shot in this movie too. But he was very young and he was very fresh. This was one of his earlier films before he went on to do Fruitvale Station and other films that follow. <laughs> yeah. And he is a very talented actor as well. Not only that, but you also got Dan DeHaan, who went on to do uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, he went on to play Harry Osborn, a.k.a. Green Goblin. And what do you know it, because... He has a scene in this movie that's totally similar to that. And that's probably how he got the role. And he is a very uh, talented actor as well. Very underrated. He's, he's done some other work that follows ahead. 
And we also got an actor named Alex Russell, who, of course, went on to do the TV show SWAT. Uh, yes, the later version of SWAT. Uh, I know we had the, the, the movie adaptation with uh, Samuel Jackson and Colin Farrell, which I know we also, which a term was based on the 70s series. Yeah. So he's in that show, too. Um, so... This was at the time when found footage genre was was getting so popular that at this point on I was getting really tired of it. Because it took a long way from films like The Blair Witch Project and Cloverfield for that matter. Even though, yes, we had found footage movies all the way in the past, you know, with Cannibal Holocaust and The Last Broadcast and several others that follow before the Blair Rich Project became such a culture phenomenon. Um, so, at this point on, this came out just a month after that horrible The Devil Inside. I hated that fucking movie so much that I walked out of, of that one screening. And that was in 2011, before it finally had an official release to come out in theaters in... In 2012, which is in January, yeah. And wow, I mean, some people defended this piece of crap, and I know it, it got it made some money. Why does William Brett Bill still has a career? I would not understand, but whatever. I hated that piece of shit. And then this movie came out out of the blue, and I was like, wow, what a surprise! Uh, but I didn't see the film until later. Like, later on. And I never owned this on, on any physical media until now. So I'm glad I picked this up. Because I've been wanting to get this for quite a long time. And I want to see how this helps up and how it, they focus on. Despite the fact that, you know, there was a controversy going around between the director and the writer. Which happens to be John Landis' son, Max. Yeah, Max Landis. Because, you know, during his sexual accusations going around, um, like maybe later on or, or right in between. Uh, yeah, I know, cancel culture going around. Um, he actually had a fight. Uh, yeah, both Josh Trank and, and Max Landis both had a fight. You know, they had a feud together and Max got banned for obvious reasons. Uh, I, I don't want to get into details here at this point on, but at this point on, they, but at that rate, um, yeah, they had a huge feud. He got fired. So Trank had continued to go on. This was actually an early project that he did too, like way back in the 2000s, probably when he was in high school. And and I, at that point on, he was doing some camera tests, you know, joining in with some other younger teenage actors. And they were about to perform exactly by using all these mind powers. You know, like they do all these pranks and activities that they have done. All of that in there. So that that's what they did until they used the powers and they'd gone too far. And that's when they become more powerful than ever before yeah <laughs> that's what we can say and of course josh trink went on to do fan four stick which is hor which i already mentioned already and everything just went downhill from there and he became totally egotistic because he wanted to do everything his own way he's he had a fight against fox because they want to go for their own choices, you know, studio interference gets in the way, you know, he causes all this chaos, chaotic stuff going around, everything he's been going through, and it kind of amazing he's still making movies. <laughs> well, he made that really bad film um, recently, but I don't want to get into that at this point. <laughs> okay, well, back to Chronicle. I'm taking too long, you know me. 
Um, yes, these are the only special features they got. Uh, there's also live extras, but you got to get an internet connection for that. But what's the point anymore? <laughs> Might not work at all, depending on all the players I've got. Anyway, it has uh, both the theatrical and extended director's cuts. So now you get to see some more lost footages um, that was not shown in theaters. Um, and also because it's unrated, that means there's going to be some scenes that couldn't earn a PG-13 rating. Yeah, maybe some perverted scenes here. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll explain that later. Uh, they have a deleted scene included, uh, plus the pre which shows you... Um, all these animatics of how it all takes place uh, during the final climax of the film or even some parts where they're all flying around like they're skydiving and all that yeah I mean like they're really flying all the way <laughs> and also the camera tests where they're explaining on all these uh, mind power activities and all Okay, and of course, as I'm saying, when it comes to the found footage genre, let's get back to that too. It's always the same. It's a tire formula. I mean, everyone's just using all their cameras of any kind. You know, like It could be a digital camera or it could be all these analog cameras that they got, you know, camcorders and all that stuff. They're always shaking around. They're always trying to film each shot here and there, just like all these home movies we've seen. And they're always going around, you know, bitching and complaining, saying the same thing over and over. Turn the camera off. Turn the fucking camera off. Turn it off. I'm like, shut up. Okay, I get it. All right? I know it's trying to be as realistic as any other as poss possible. I mean, I've seen YouTube videos where they do the same thing too. I mean, they're always going to tell them to shut it off. I get it. And then there's always going to be more drama here and there. The characters are acting so shallow, so stupid, that next thing you know, karma hits the fan. And then, then there's all these angle shots that, that's totally shaky, that it just makes me feel completely nauseous. Okay. Now look, I, I've used a lot of cameras all the time. Well, <laughs> sometimes. I mean, of course. I mean, I, I've used all my digital cameras I've been shooting a lot of videos I've been posting a lot of videos like this many times already even if I had to use like an iPhone or or even a tablet or or even my digital camera or even that old camera that I had the the Canon CR80 and of course <laughs> my very first uh, video camera the Tyco video cam yes I've been shooting a lot of this stuff you know, during my childhood days all the way to today. But I can't help it. So I know, now I know how everyone feels. <laughs> Whatever. But I know some people get camera shy too, so that's always the case. But I'm not a big fan of found footage movies because it's always the same no matter what genre they choose. Especially horror movies because they often do this. It's just annoying, and it needs to stop. And they've done POV ones, too, where they had to shoot it in any kind. Like, it could be an iPhone or an Android. They could shoot that. Yeah, like, like the movie Unsane. Yeah, they got that, too. But chances are, there are a few found footage movies that are, that are better than most of the ones that we're getting that were garbage. Okay, I mentioned the Blair Witch Project and Cloverfield come to mind in this movie of course but there's also could be other ones like like searching you know that's very clever how they did this and then but at least they know what they're doing and then there could be other films that could come up with something this experimental just as long as they got the story they got the characters and they got everything that's going around yeah the character developments of any kind and how it really works even for this particular technology. That's exactly what they had to do. And of course, they're going to use CGI, special effects, and all that stuff. 
even though it's not real that's the whole point it's entertainment that's what we're in for and that's what I went in with Chronicle and this was a surprise for me when I saw this and I saw this when it was um, when it was on TV or I or saw it online actually I would say I would I've seen it online on um, like on Netflix or any other but I also saw it when it was on TV like HBO yeah because I know HBO played this and, and Cinemax so. I just never got this on physical media so, until now <laughs> uh, I'm glad I got it at book off and maybe someday they'll put this on 4k if Fox and Disney will be able to to take their chances on that. I know they said they might do a sequel to this and somehow they said they're gonna use a female lead it's gonna be like a reboot or something like that and I don't know if that's ever gonna happen and frankly I would be better off just being a standalone film as it is okay I get what's going on but I don't want to be getting into this garbage okay enough of this crap it's it's getting too long but let's get to the review shall we <laughs> it stars dandy Han, who of course went on to do um a lot of movies to follow including the box trolls also valerian and uh leap that was another one leap and of course the amazing spider-man 2 uh, all come to mind Alex Russell, of course, went on to do the series um, SWAT. He was also in a movie called Believe Me. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, as we all know, went on to do films like Fubil Station, Black Panther, Creed. Yes, Fan Four Stick. And many others that he's done. Uh, Michael Kelly... Uh, who was in the series House of Cards. That's on Netflix. Yeah, that was a series with Kevin Spacey. Another actor that's getting controversial these days. Unbelievable. Uh, Ashley Grace. She was in a movie called About Cherry the same year as this. And I think she had a series called Startup. Yeah, she's a model. too. Uh, Bo Peterson. Anna Wood. Uh, Rudy Malcolm, Luke Tyler, Crystal Donna Roberts, Adrian Collins, Grant Powell, Armand Allcamp, and Nicole Bailey. Yep, it's written by Max Landis, as we know, John Landis' son, uh, joining in with Josh Trank, who also directed the movie. The movie begins set in Seattle, Washington. We meet a social cast teenage boy named Andrew Dedmer, who's played by Dandy Hahn, who, like we all experience, you know, during those school days, he's constantly being picked on by a bunch of bullies who are assholes. And if that wasn't worse enough, he's being totally abused by his alcoholic father, Richard, played by Michael Kelly. Yeah, who's just constantly beating the shit out of him. When he's not doing anything he says, he locks the door. He wants to be alone in his own privacy of his room. So he gets to do whatever he wants, you know, doing his homework or doing all these blogs or anything like that. That's what he wants to do in his life. But most of all, he's coping with his loving and caring mother, the only one that he could trust named Karen, who's played by Bo Peterson, and I'm talking about this kind of Karen, not those annoying, stuck-up know-it-alls who likes to push your buttons every time, which is an internet buzz, I mean, you spot them at certain places, they'll never go away. No, but this is a different Karen as we speak. But she's terminally ill, battling with cancer, which isn't easy for her because she's struggling pretty hard. So that's why they're trying to get some medicine to make her feel better. She has a catheter on her nose. Hoping she'll she'll be able to get well someday, but that's but it might not be able to happen at this point. 
Anyway, his only friend is a maternal cousin named Matt Garrity, played by Alex Russell, who unfortunately has gone to the same high school as Andrew does, because, you know, they both spend time. But he's mostly, you know, all the way in his neighborhood. But most of the time he has his own situations too, because he is camera shy. He has his own anxiety too, especially with his on and off girlfriend named Casey Letter, who's played by Ashley Hinshaw, Grace, <laughs> blonde girl that he loves so much, but even though he's having trouble trying to get to know her better, even when she's doing all these blogs. Anyway, to help his situation straight, Andrew buys a camera for him so he can do his own video diary. And just to make things clear, Matt invites Andrew to a party, you know, just to help him become more social and to spend time with some new friends here and there because he doesn't pretty much have time to spend with anyone. So he is very shy and, and the fact that he's been teased a lot by these bullies. Well, basically he just spends most of his time just bringing his camera, filming everything that's happening. You know, this is a huge party, you know, with a lot of techno music or any pop songs here and there which all of his filming caused an altercation with the attendee who's um, the one in charge he ends up you know beating the shit out of him throwing um, beer all the way through his camera lens which I know earlier this one bully did actually kick this camera I mean luckily it still works but there was only one glass shard that came out of it yeah so his camera's almost damaged at that rate he left he was all alone he was crying he actually wiped um, all that beer out of his camera lens until suddenly this one popular student a hot shot but he's also smart and intelligent named Steve Montgomery played by Michael B Jordan had appeared and he found Andrew outside just asking him to come out and record this one specific um, event that's happening where he went inside this large hole that he found through the neck of the woods. And then Matt came along too where all three of them had journey all the way down into the small tunnel. In, through this large hole, of course, and that's where they discovered this mysterious glowing crystal line object. It could have been coming from an alien ship of some sort. And, well, it was never fully explained, but it's interesting and very refreshing right there. But this particular object somehow begins to go haywire and now all three of them have discovered that they now have telekinesis powers yes and that's where they're getting all these nosebleeds around just like um <laughs> 11 from the tv show stranger things yeah that was way before and of course um all these other uh sci-fi movies even in the 80s like for example um, Firestarter, we have uh, the father of, of the girl, who, yeah, Charlie, who unfortunately has nosebleeds too whenever he, he uses his telekinesis power, you know, using mind control, and so you get tons of nosebleeds coming from your brain. So, with that aside, um, a few weeks later, Andrew started videotaping everyone, his entire friends, so they got together and now they started using all their telekinesis abilities to pull out some pranks with anybody, especially during the shopping center where, well, before they went to the shopping center, they went to this local restaurant, a coffee shop, where they were just having some breakfast. Um, 
there was this uh, mind trick where Andrew uh, stabs uh, Matt with a fork on his hand and suddenly it bends completely. Um, then there was uh, another scene where, which was in the director's cut, by the way, was when Andrew eventually creates this Virgin Mary straight out of uh, a puddle of syrup. And that this is where it causes uh, a ruckus with uh, the waitress because she spotted it and she was shocked and appalled that she just ran straight into um, the chef. And then later on, that same uh, waitress, yeah, she's Hispanic, um, so I guess if we could see that. <laughs> um, I think it was either Matt or I think it could be Andrew that was using this mind control to move this one tray where the waitress was about to clear out um, the entire table of, of the patrons and then she dropped the, the plate accidentally just when she was about to put it on the tray as it started moving around and she was frightened. Well, next thing you know, Steve was using mind control by shoving the car from this one lady and moving it directly into the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> so when the lady came back, you know, already shopping, she was totally confused thinking that if if someone stole her car and then she just found it all the way to the the back and <laughs> and they're just going around joking around and when they went inside this toy store yes and I think it was a Toys R Us I believe it could be any other yeah as they started doing some more particular pranks where they actually fooled this one woman with a shopping cart and <laughs> moving around and and, and then also fool this little girl with with the stuffed teddy bear. <laughs> and, you know, thinking that there's a ghost and just scares this girl out, out of her wits. And then also fools this one teenage guy. Yeah, it has to be a teenager. Who uh, was just chewing some gum and then just knocking him over <laughs> for all the rest of the gum aisle. <laughs> Ah, that was so crazy. See, it was just like how you watch them on all these hidden camera shows like America's Funny Home Videos or even on YouTube. So you see pranks like this all the time. It's it's just crazy and insane, but hilarious. Never get tired of them. <laughs> but then somehow Andrew kind of got a little too far with his power because all of a sudden... Because of this rude driver on the back as they were driving around, um, Andrew eventually just just shoved this one driver all the way straight down into the hill of the river and crashes, which the driver almost drowned completely. So they had to save his life and was rushed to the hospital as soon as they can. And that's where Matt got totally furious about what Andrew did and that's where he decided to bring his own rules while using the telekinesis powers so there are times when you have to knock it over not get overboard with using these powers because sooner or later you're gonna become more powerful more evil than ever before well that's exactly what Andrew's gonna experience later on because it only gets worse from there but meanwhile um, during this next day, uh, they were trying to use some powers once again, but they had to try to obey their own rules, for sure. But they can pretty much do whatever they want, so who cares? However, um, they are about to test themselves how to fly. So they had to fly all the way up uh, straight from this junkyard. So they were jumping up. Um, Matt has trouble doing it, and also... <laughs> Steve was ready to do it too. Well, Steve already was already up in the air for sure. And then Andrew was doing the same here. So now they're all about to fly all the way up in the sky like they were skydiving. But they were really flying around only to be knocked out by this plane that appeared out of nowhere. 
and that's where you know Steve have fell all the way down uh, along with Andrew trying to save his life <clears throat> and he did and Matt just came around the camera also fell too and what do you know they survived and what a relief um, there was also uh, one scene in the movie where um, when they were using those abilities yeah Matt w was trying to do his ability by creating these Legos um, and apparently Andrew actually was very uh, intelligent about it but that he actually created a space needle out of Legos it's really awesome he had a space needle that's in Seattle <laughs> but then Matt just knocks it out <laughs> okay so why when we're getting to these situations I mean things were getting better because now or later are getting worse because at this point on Andrew was getting ready to have his own special talent was because there was a talent show going around at school and he was getting ready to to perform a magic act uh, joining in with Steve so because of their abilities that they have they can do anything and Matt is actually shooting this on his new uh, camcorder joining in with uh, Casey because she's shooting it as well and, and I know they're getting to know each other very well more often even though <laughs> Casey thought that he hardly ever used a camera <laughs> but now he's getting he's learning <laughs> anyway so after that experience um, they just went to a party and it was actually Steve's party at his own particular mansion yeah this was like a, a huge party because Andrew is now beginning to join in being able to meet some girls and eventually he did meet a girl this uh, this sexy um, beautiful you know, red hair girl uh, they were ready to go out have some drinks um, they were also playing beer pong too but then all of a sudden just when they're about to make love in the bedroom and yes yeah, Steve was ready to film this shot while well, Matt is just over there you know just you know, fooling around with his girlfriend Casey of course <laughs> so on and so forth somehow Andrew got totally embarrassed because he just vomited on that girl and he just didn't want to sh have this shot on camera he just wanted him to leave right away and to make matters worse yes he's been totally abused once again with his father Richard just keeps beating him up having big fights you know he was trying to make sure you know he's trying to take good care of his mom Karen I mean there was even times when they were trying to spend some time together you know going around out the world hoping to make sure she'll feel safe for sure, if anything and also you know he spends time with his friends in the bedroom all alone and just relax and do chill and have fun but at this rate things got really worse even for this tragedy because of all the abuse he's been going through next thing you know he was all alone he went all the way up in the sky on this violently storm night violently stormy night where somehow Steve had appeared and he was about to uh, make a conversation with him telling him that I didn't mean all this to happen but it was too late because at this point on Steve got killed by getting struck by lightning and he fell all the way down and he's now dead they had a funeral Matt got really upset at him for what just happened and and it just gets worse from here because now he's all alone he just went and just brought in all the photos and or brought in everything and just explain about I was very sorry about what happened I didn't mean to all this to occur just because this telekinesis powers is 
is going completely strong. It's really taken over my body so much that now I'm becoming more evil and powerful than ever. And I wanted this to end. At least that's what he fought. And then he, he, became, he grew very strong. He started a huge fight with Richard in the basement. And then he was even ready to... Um, because he just went to the pharmacy just trying to get some more medication for Karen, his mom, that because it costs so much money for a prescription, well, he takes matters of his own hands by actually dressing up, you know, wearing this uh, fighter fighter costume um, just to steal more money from all these, uh, all these boozers and then later robbed um, a, a gas station store and then which at this rate causes a huge flash I mean yes because the, the the owner was ready to pull out a gun was ready to shoot him and it was there was a huge explosion at the gas station and that's what sends him to the hospital and I think it sends the gas station owner to the hospital as well, but they didn't show that. So now Richard had showed up, and then we learned that Karen had died. And then now Richard, while, while Andrew's in a coma, uh, Richard was explaining about that he's, she's gone, and now... I tried to do everything for her, but all of this was your fault for what you did. And you could have been there. But unfortunately, he, Andrew eventually woke up and was ready to fight against Richard one more time and was ready to kill him, too. On all the way on top of the, the hospital building and was ready to throw him out, too. But luckily... Matt uh, finally got the call because he's getting all these nosebleeds while he was filming with his girlfriend uh, Casey and he thought also because it was a birthday party that was going around um, he ran as fast as he can just to go after Andrew and that's where in the final climax you know there was a huge total destruction going around because now Andrew is more powerful than ever He's now becoming the apex predator. So he's going around, you know, being attacked by a bunch of cops around and all the, all these innocent people, all these victims around. Um, they're getting, a lot of news reports were, were reporting this too. So this was like a huge battle between Matt and Andrew because already, you know, Andrew just took, uh, both Matt and, and Casey, while they were in the car, all the way up on top of the Space Needle Tower. And I know they even spent time going to the Space Needle Tower, too. Uh, especially when when Andrew was making conversation with Steve uh, earlier, you know, before he passed. Um, but yeah, this was like a big battle. You know, they were fighting all the way around, from building to building, total destructions around. And I like all these superhero films that we've seen, like all these Marvel MCUs and, and DC, DCEUs that we get. Yes, we've seen this before, you know, the hero versus the villain in this one particular battle fight. Well, all of, of the entire group of innocent victims are running for their lives. Yeah, that sort of thing. I mean, also like creature feature films. They do the same thing, but all these total destructions. So at this rate, uh, all the cops were ready to shoot them. By this rate, shoot Andrew. And then Andrew just went totally out of control. And that's when Matt was telling him to stop right away. Because he needed to stop hurting people or anybody. Because you're going to be killed right away. But... Matt has no other choice but to actually kill Andrew by taking the the arrow that was from this statue and it just went straight into Andrew 
and he died. Yeah, arrow went straight into his body for sure. And then he ran away, went all the way straight to Tibet because uh, earlier in the film, Andrew was explained that someday he would love to explore Tibet, uh, join in with his friends too, so that way, you know, they can do whatever they want. Like, they get to maybe explore Buddhism and all this other stuff, like going to these snowy mountains, all these uh, huts around, everything. Well, he got his wish, as they're now up in heaven. As he explains um, in this blog, that this is going to be the final time you'll get to see me on camera. He left the, the camera you know, with the, the tripod in there too. And also, because hopefully they'll get this message too if this ha ever happens. But you know the camera is going to die out for sure. Unless someone out there would find it. Which I know they will, if it's possible. Um, he just ended it there, and he's going to be able to save good people around with his powers. You know, he'll be able to protect someone for sure. He's not going to go overboard, anything like that. So he's going to be a truly nice person. And there we go. Yeah, and this was one big experience i mean even for a found footage film um the special effects were incredible for its time yeah they're all done in cgi with green screen effects so you can definitely see the movements going around and the camera angles that they had to shoot they had to change cameras uh, even though this was all shot in an re Ariflex uh, camera yeah an re Ariflex camera that they got just to get those particular angles and, and particular shots that's based on the cameras that they use from the Sony's to the Canon. But they also did use a real Canon uh, camera that they got, which is the, uh, at this rate, the, the Canon XL1 Mini DV. Yeah, it's almost, which is pretty big, but it's almost like... Um, and I've seen those cameras too, especially at, at inclusion films. But it was like the, you know, kind of like how the video resolution was, because it's all standard definition, how it's set with all this graininess around and grudginess that you see. Just like my Canon CR80, which was small, very small. It could shoot a lot of that. And even though... It can go to 16 by 9, well, the way you set it up, it's not going to be able to go for there unless you have to change the resolution on your TV to make it look more widescreen for sure. That's that's what they were going to go for. Uh, especially when they had to switch other HD cameras that are also Canon, um, Vixia, HF, M30, or any other. But they also use Sony's and other kinds for vlogging and other particular shots and also this this incredible movement too where you don't even have to use a tripod but I'm sure they probably had hooked this up on a crane and all this other stuff where they had to move it around in different angles and even in this most terrifying shots where they were on top of the space needle even though this is of course a green screen effect that they use but having to shoot these angles is, is very terrifying but also incredible. Like you're doing those 360 shots and spins and all. And I know there's a little bit of shakiness. You can see some macro blocking and stuff, how they attended to do it. Um, but they did have some incredible shots. So they had to shoot all the way from up to one angle to down. And then they had to move it around here. And then they had to use all these multiple cameras, especially the scene where Andrew had to take it out using his mind power got all these these multiple cameras from many victims that were shooting this at the space needle you know all the glass shattering and breaking around yeah those shots that they did and this was an experience that they had to do when they got matthew jensen the cinematographer to do all that stuff so 
He's like a whole bunch of lenses, like the Anjanil Atimo and the Cook uh, S4 lens that they had to shoot these wide angles and low angles and all that here and there. Incredible how they can do that. Well, anyway, <laughs> they they have done a lot of practice. They had to do a lot of testing to, to have this appear in the film. There was a lot of work that they went through considering this is exactly what they chose. I know I heard that Josh Trank wanted to come up with a different second act for the story. Um, exactly what he wanted, but the studios had to change that, or perhaps I think Max wanted to, to change that too, um, without his, his input, all of that. But it is really incredible how they did it. And, and of course, uh, the, the effects that they used for the mind control powers and how they did that, it's just, wow, eye-popping and soaring right away. <clears throat> and they did use... Uh, stump people to portray the the characters of the teenagers um you know flying around and all that while they're shooting this and with the green screen effect they just added all that together and they, they moved around even when they were going up in the sky and then they're flying around for sure wow so, so they did some so yes they used a lot of incredible stunts and stuff that they had in mind. Uh, the perform so yes, the performances were terrific. We could definitely see how they're being portrayed, uh, including Dandy Han. I mean, his portrayal as we could speak, how he changes from a social outcast. You really felt bad for him for after being teased by a bunch of bullies. He he hardly makes contact with any friends around in high school. I mean, this is his anxiety, even though he does his own type of activities in his own particular room or, or even around here and there. Like, he loves to shoot on camera. That's what he loves to do. He loves to do a lot of projects of his own, even though Matt's probably the only one who can trust and contact. Um, and at this rate, I mean... Steve eventually uh, changes life because now he becomes more social. But it's actually Matt that wanted to help him out, too. And now they become, you know, the best of friends for sure. Spending more time. Because, you know, things just seems to get worse and worse for him. And that's where he becomes more evil and more powerful than ever. That's how it changes him. That's kind of where he got the role for... Green Goblin in that role, oh, in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, of course, playing a hot shot for a popular student as Steve. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can tell that he was just really enjoying it so much. But he really cares for them, trying to help them out, considering that he is the most popular jock of them all. And that's probably how he got his role for playing the Human Torch in Fan Four Stick. Yeah, another movie that Trank had directed and wrote and stuff. And at that point on, <laughs> he went on to become an even more hot shot as Killmonger in Black Panther. So, what do you know? And, and of course, a hot shot as Adonis Creed in, in the Creed films. Yeah, trying to become pretty much like his father, Apollo. So the, there you have it. And of course, Alex Russell, you know, which we can see how his anxiety is. You know, he's shy, but he's trying to get to know his girlfriend very well. I mean, there's even a scene in the director's cut, uh, which is also has a deleted scene as well, where he was with his girlfriend, Casey, and then Casey was eventually naked, or perhaps she was topless, all to her uh, underwear. And she was covering herself with, with a shirt or blouse. <laughs> yeah, just to fool her around. I guess now we know that she just wants to get funky <laughs> with him. Uh, but it happened twice. <laughs> I mean, one from the deleted scene and the other one from, from the director's cut. 
And that's why it was unrated. They couldn't show this to the PG-13 cuts. I know, the spite of Max Lendis and, and Josh Trank's uh, accusations and everything going around, even with the feud, I think they did a great job. They really did. And it's one of the better found footage movies I've seen to join in with Cloverfield, along with the Blair Witch Project, and maybe a few others that might might be better than any of these annoying ones that we got. You know, like Unfriended, The Devil Inside, and all this other garbage that we got these days. I mean, like The Gallows. How much do we need these days? I don't understand this generation. Yeah, the host and all of that. Or I think it was host. A different host. Anyway. So at least now we know that there are better ones out there. And it was a hit, by the way, too. Um, because it was only 15 million budgets um, that only made, like, hard to believe, $126.6 million through the international box office sales. So, yeah, they it was actually... Uh, a bit of a sleeper hit so when it came out in North America, which became a huge hit worldwide, for sure. And that was a surprise, because it actually came out on Super Bowl weekend, too. Something that you didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. But either way, um, it's adorable. And we're soaring through new heights. Anyway... I can see why critics uh, had a total buzz when this came out, too. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 85%. Now, I know I said it in the past. I mean, I think I did it when I did my review of Fan Stick when I said it shouldn't be that high, you know, 85%. Well, it could have been less than 85 in my opinion, because there are a few um, problems here and there that could be resolved, but otherwise... Um, I gotta say, it's a lot terrific, probably a lot better than I expected. Yeah, and it kind of makes it up for that terrible The Devil Inside. But it only gets worse from all the other films that are coming out later. Yeah. It's just a tired genre, and it needs to stop. Or a tired formula, perhaps. Anyway, so that's Chronicle, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Josephine Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.